Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is the part one of the Fruit Ninja in Scratch series. So this is the final product I'm showing you right now. You can see we have a cursor in our main menu. We can slice at the fruit and they will pop up, you know, randomly in random spaces. You can see we have some physics, some gravity, um, and some cool animations as well with the splat. The first way to lose is to hit a bomb like this. Uh, and you can see it'll show our score of 10. We can retry, and I'll show you the other way to lose, which is through live. So if we miss a fruit, one of our lives will go down. Uh, let's say we miss another, and then let's say we get the third, but miss the fourth. And so it's a bomb here, but you can see if we miss this, then we lose as well. And it'll show our score. And then we can quit and go back to the main menu. So this is the final product. We're going to start in part one by just spawning our fruits. So uh, we're gonna delete this sprite one, create a new sprite, and I have provided all the art for this project in a link in the description below. But basically you're going to want to shift click through all of this, select all 16 of the fruit uh, assets, and then upload them into Scratch. And we can delete our first. So you can see we have a strawberry, uh, I think this is a mango or a peach, um, and the green apple, and then finally the watermelon, and the splats all come with it too, as well as all the different sides. So let's go into our code, and let's, first of all, just set the size to something more appropriate, like 50, uh, or even that might be too big. Let's go like uh, 40 maybe. Whoops. Um, and what we're going to do is practice doing a throw. Uh, and, and like trying to figure out, okay, what are the mechanics? So let's start by saying one flag is clicked. We're going to create a clone for this sprite only, and we're gonna call it um, clone XV, which is gonna be our X velocity, so how fast it moves in the X, and then we're gonna have a clone YV. And we're gonna go through setting all of this up. So the first thing you wanna do is set the starting location, so you can say go to X um, and it'll be a pick random because we want to start somewhere along the bottom. So we can go from negative 130 to 130 and we're gonna set the Y to negative 180 which is the bottom of the screen. And then what we're gonna do is point in direction up which is zero. So we can point in direction zero and we're going to pick a random amount to turn because obviously they won't be going straight up. So we're going to drag in another pick random and we're going to say pick random from negative 15 to 15. And then from this direction, we're not going to use that to actually move 10 steps, so we're going to use that direction and translate it into an XV and a YV. And we use some basic trigonometry. If you don't understand that, no worries, just follow along. Uh, but we're going to have to bring in a multiplication um, a subtraction and one of this ABS of. And so here we're going to have a ABS of, we're actually going to change this to COS for cosine. We're going to go to motion, bring in direction, and then we're going to multiply this by the number that I've found good is 25. And we're going to do the same thing for our YV. And so we're going to change this to sine instead of cosine. Um, and then in times, instead of times 25, we're going to do times 17. Then instead of pointing up, we're going to point to the right. Now this is not for the purpose of actually moving, but just for how it looks. And then we're going to drag in another one of these turn randoms. And we can keep it to, let's say, a little bit more, negative 20 to 20 to add some more variation. Um, and then we're going to actually move our uh, sprite, our fruit, and so we're going to say forever, and then change x by, as you may guess, clone xv. And then the next thing we're going to do is change y by our uh, clone yv. And then we're going to turn, and we're going to go into operators, drag in a divided. We want to turn proportional to the clone xv, but not all the way because it's too much. So we're just going to make it a lesser amount. Um, and we also need to add gravity, and that's pretty easy. All we do is just take away from our clone YV, which is how fast our clone is moving vertically. So we can change that to, let's say, 0.65. So 
So as you can see, we have a fruit that spawns, right? And let's say you guys may have to play around with the size. Um, let's say 30. And yeah, so something like that looks pretty good. Uh, and as you can see, we haven't added the mechanics for the clone to actually fall all the way bottom and get deleted. But this is basically uh, the start. So we're going to add a little bit more. Um, instead of doing this in our main, we're going to do this in a clone because we want to have multiple of them. So you can say when I start as clone. There it is. And then obviously here we're going to have to create clones. Um, now we also are going to have multiple different types of clones. So you can see we have the unsliced fruit, but we're also going to have a left, a right, a splat. We're going to use that just in this one sprite. So we want to keep track of which type of clone are we actually talking to. So we're going to make a variable called clone type. We're going to make it for the sprite only. And in our when this flag is clicked for the spawner, we want to set this to as you may guess spawner. And uh, we're going to actually do this below and we're going to say forever and obviously this will change but we'll just do a wait one second and then set clone type to uh, fruit which is our unsliced fruit and then create clone myself so basically um, our main sprite is a spawner but then it's creating these clones which are fruits and so we only want to um, do this if our clone type is a fruit right whoops and then we actually want to set this back to spawner as well okay so we should be creating clones now you can see they spawn um, and they should have this kind of random direction uh, the next thing I want to do for this episode is make it so that we don't only use the watermelon but that we have the other fruits as well so we're gonna create a variable and we're gonna call this um, clone fruit we're gonna make it for the sprite only and we're going to say um, when I start as clone if clone type equals fruit we're going to set our clone fruit uh, to a random number and we're gonna do from 1 to 4 because we have four different types of fruits then all we have to do is say when I start as clone um, and uh, we're going to do, when I start as clone, switch costume to uh, right here. We're going to go to operators to bring in a join. And then we're going to join our clone type, which you can tell would be fruit for the clones, with our clone fruit, which is maybe a little confusing. But basically, it'll go to either fruit one, fruit two, fruit three, or fruit four. So let's see if that's working. So you can see we have an apple, a watermelon, another apple, a watermelon. Um, let's see if we get, yeah, the mango, um, and then if we can get the strawberry as well. So yeah, that's where we're going to leave it for episode one. We have a lot more to add, and I hope you guys join the series and get excited about this game. I think it's pretty awesome, and I will see you guys in part two. Peace out.